and we're back. I make videos with my dad asking random questions from growing up and just to kind of get some better insight. And yes, we're filming outside. I'm very excited about this. We're filming at night in the mountains, in the woods of Alabama where I grew up. I normally can't film outside because of the wind, but there's no wind. It's perfect weather. And you can hear, are they, those are crickets or cicadas or something. <laughs> That's the sound of Alabama, if you can hear that. So this is one of those things I was thinking about. I remember being a kid, I was like four or five years old. We stopped to get gas and I wanted to get a candy bar at the gas station. And you know, my dad, I, I feel like you said something like, oh, you, you don't need to be, you know, that's nothing good for you. But you let me get it anyway, whatever it was, a Snickers bar or whatever. And then I remember sitting, it was in the Ranchero, what was it, 68 Ranchero? Seven. 67? Yeah. So we're in the Ranchero, <laughs> I'm eating the candy bar, and I said, do you, do you, have you never eaten a candy before, candy bar before? And like your instant response was like, not really. Because <laughs> you just don't, I never saw you eat anything that wasn't healthy. So I just want to know the, the exact story on why that is, because... I feel especially being in the South, like that's part of the culture is you just eat bad food, eat fried food and mm. you know, get diabetes from drinking soda, all those things. I think of that as very Southern, but for you, why, why were you already conditioned that way by the time you were, let me try to think, you would have been probably 29 at the t time of that story. Why? <laughs> Well, I guess <clears throat> we just really didn't have it. You know, if we got candy or, you know, a, a soda, you know, cut all, we call we cut them coats down here, no matter what it was. But uh, <clears throat> the only way we could get them was we sold the bottles. You know, the bottles we had a deposit. We could take and cash those in at the little local stores and, you know, then it'd be enough money to maybe get a Coke and a candy bar. So that's basically all, all we ever got, you know, we didn't, we didn't, my mom never bought, bought that stuff for us, so we just didn't have much of it. it was, if we had it, it was just a treat type deal. So it was kind of like a luxury almost in some yeah. way? Or something. Mm -hmm. But it's funny because, and I've made videos about this before, about how for most of the history of the, history of the world, if you had the privilege of being overweight, that was a privilege. You could afford to consume much, so much calories that they, you, you were of royalty. Meanwhile, everyone else is like, where am I getting my next meal from? But now in modern day setting, it's if you're of lower income, you're more likely to eat all the junk food, yeah. become obese, get diabetes, and that's your retirement plan to deal with all your health problems. Yeah. Like, so that's what happens with, so it's interesting how it's switched now to where it tends to be if you are of a higher income level, you all often have a, more of insight and education on this is bad for you this is going to give you diabetes this is going to give you cancer and knowing that but so it's interesting how it's reversed so for you growing up that was a luxury for soda or candy bar and now like people typically of lower income families it's like here's your soda here's your you know whatever little debbie's what it is and that's what they're eating or yeah. chips it's just all empty calories full of sugar and processed uh, trans fats and processed mm -hmm. So, but it is, that's interesting. So in your lifetime, you've seen how that's changed. Oh yeah. Well, I, I guess when I was about um, maybe 17 or 18, I worked with a guy who was kind of in the health things, you know. And well, so he, what, you did when? Um, I guess I would have been, you know, 18, 19, maybe right around there. Um, but he was, for that time, he the, was in health you know, healthy thing. He had, he had a mother, mother earth magazine that he got. So he was learning a lot of things off of that. So he was, he was telling them to me and I was, got really interested in it. So I started doing a lot of things. That's basically when it started. So that would have been like 1976. Yeah. Around yeah. the time, like the first Rocky movie. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, and that was, yeah. And that's interesting too, because that movie was maybe one of the first like movies about like, I don't know, like boxing. It's like one of the first boxing movies, really. Yeah. And all about fitness and health. And it has, that's the first the movie where he cracks the egg and he drinks it. And yeah. It's funny because that magazine, Mother Earth. Yeah. 
it's funny because that was like the internet back then. Yeah. To you. Like, you had this somewhat exclusive information and so I read it on a website. Yeah. I got it in this weird magazines no one ever heard yeah. of. Yeah. <laughs> you were like a hippie or something if you had Mother Earth. But, but I remember that's when I first learned about, you know, white bread and wheat bread. Yeah. And that's when the, I stopped eating white bread. Yeah. And just, you know, only wheat bread. Yeah. From that point. And so then, you know, then once the internet, you have the internet and you can research and find anything you wanted to know, things even change more drastically yeah. as far as health, health things, yeah. So, and it, I mean, just this guy, do you still know the guy? Is he still alive? No, he, he, he died last year, matter of fact. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How, how old was he? Um, he would have been like 67, I think. Man, so he died young to be a guy who he knew did. so much about health. He did. Well, that's... Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of erratic, <laughs> but um, he didn't stay in the health thing. Oh, okay. He actually died obese and was with diabetes and all that. Oh, all the stuff we just talked about. <laughs> He's like, I don't know. He just, there for a while he was in biking. He was so healthy, but you know, somewhere he just uh, lost it all. Yeah. And he actually died because of yes. that, like a very pre preventable death. Very, very, he was like 400 pounds. Was, Whoa. Yeah, yeah. Wow, it's amazing he was still alive weighing that much being that age. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's funny because, <laughs> so to think about this in perspective and, and how, I talk all the time on this channel about how having a positive role model as a father is everything. And most of the videos on this channel are about guys that are, haven't even lost any hair. They're 17 years old, freaking out about going bald. It may never even happen. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But they don't have a positive presence from their father telling them, hey, women like you for you being a likable guy, not for having hair and all this stuff. So they don't hear all this positive reinforcement. And I think the absence of a father or a negative role that a father would play can really ha destroy a young man's identity, uh, who, who he is. So I take that very seriously. And I just think about how, because I grew up with you being that way and never seeing you even eat fast food that I can think of. I mean, I really can't think of that ever being the case. I remember you'd go to karate every Tuesday we drive out 45 minutes, and I wanted to go with you just so that, because you'd let me get a $2 hamburger from Hardee's on the way back. Yeah. You would never get anything, but I would endure getting in the car, going all that way, sitting there bored while you did karate, which was you being you know, physically active and all that, and then just so I could get a hamburger. Because for me as a kid, the commodity of having a hamburger or being able to get a knee-high soda at the gas station next door to that one place, that's... So, but growing up seeing that, growing up seeing the fitness, growing up with the mentality that, okay, white bread's bad for you, you gotta have wheat bread and, and these things, and, and just the absence of you eating candy and the absence of you eating fast food, obviously, naturally, that is gonna have an effect on me. So it's not a coincidence that for me, you know, I was vegetarian for seven years and vegan for five and a half, and, and it's been a year since I stopped being vegan, but now, even now, I'm still kind of going back to the vegan yeah. thing, and it's like, yeah. I have my vegan smoothie in the morning, I drink some like LaCroix or whatever, which is no calories, just water, I'll have maybe a Cliff Bar black coffee, and when I get home, I eat one real meal, which is a salad, and often, it's vegan food, yeah. and when there's some kind of lean meat available, like last night, we had cod, and today, you smoked chicken, yeah. but even then, it was like no skin, no fat, it's not fried, Yeah and had this big green salad. So that's not a coincidence. And granted, I could have chose my own way and done whatever I wanted to. I could be 400 pounds right now. But that obviously influenced me. And had you not been that way, I don't think I would have made those life decisions. And ultimately, I think even the fact that I married someone who's definitely <laughs> that way too, because my, she's, my wife says that she, she claims that she's never eaten fast food in her life. She said the closest she came to it in high school, one time she went through the drive through McDonald's and got an ice cream cone. <laughs> and that's the closest she's came. In fact, uh, she's out of town right now. I took the kids to Chick-fil-A. It was the first time as, as a family minus her we went. And I went because I knew that she wouldn't go. And we had a great time, but I even told her afterwards, I was like, yeah, you would have hated that. It, <laughs> it, was, it was still fast food and you wouldn't have liked it. 
So I married into a wife from California who's into all that stuff and she actually had a lot to do with me becoming vegetarian too. And she had a lot to me, uh, 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 I guess ultimately kind of come in full circle too. So now we're both in this situation. I think it's probably a pretty healthy situation where yeah. most of the time we're vegan. And I say, I'm vegan except for when I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Because like yeah. now I don't have to miss out on social situations. Like uh -huh. whatever's going on, if this is what we're eating, I'll eat it. If it yeah. Well, I don't eat, I still don't eat pork or shellfish. Right. I don't know about you. Yeah. you no, do? no. And when did you stop eating pork and shellfish when I did 11 years ago? Is that when? I, I probably stopped eating. Yeah. Yeah. I would say, yeah. I, I never did eat much of it at yeah. all. But then once I learned about pork and shellfish, you know, I stopped eating it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, because actually this Thanksgiving will be 11 years. The last time I knowingly yeah. ate pork or shellfish. Yeah. It was that Thanksgiving because I remember we were going to Virginia and my wife and I stopped at uh, Cracker Barrel and they had this Thanksgiving dinner there for like eight bucks and they had ham and that was the last time I ate anything like that on purpose at least. <laughs> um, only to find out later like if you get a frappuccino from Starbucks and have whipped cream, the whipped cream is a byproduct of pork. I mean all these little things I learned later on but as far as like knowingly eating it, yeah. I've remained faithful to that. Yeah. Just because in case you don't know, I mean it goes back thousands and thousands of years to the Jewish people they were, it was part of their law not to eat pork or shellfish. And growing up hearing that, I thought, oh, that's just a weird specific rule that God made up. And then you find out, actually, these are the bottom feeders of the ecosystem. And it's like the disgusting thought of eating a possum or a vulture. That's gross. <laughs> but ultimately, shrimp and scalp, uh, scallops and uh, pork of any kind, uh, yeah. that's not really much better. Mm -hmm. But, um, and it's, and, and I guess it's a little bit of a, a paradox too, because You've lived your whole life in the South, so have I. And down here, like, you're supposed to love bacon and you're supposed to love yeah. uh, sausage for breakfast. Yeah. And I was telling some people at work recently how, in our house, I never remember bacon being cooked or sausage and eggs and gravy. That never happened. Anytime I went to a friend's house and spent the night, next morning their mom's making <laughs> sausage, egg, <Yeah. laughs> gravy, all that stuff, bacon. And I'm, it's like, it's not that I didn't like it, but I just, didn't grow up with it, so it wasn't something I cared about. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know we tried the turkey bacon for a little while, but you know, it just it really wasn't worth it. You know, just just don't eat it. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. It, it's it's funny because now, like, I'm going back to more of the vegan mindset, and it's like a couple. Of, the last time I was here, my wife and I drove along the Alabama uh, Lookout Mountain down to downtown Chattanooga, and we were gonna get steaks at this fancy restaurant in uh, Chattanooga. They ended up being an hour wait. We decided, let's just go to Whole Foods. And we got like tempa bacon. Have you ever had that? Yeah. It's actually really good if, if it's done right. No, I haven't had that. Yeah, so it's tempa, which I guess is a byproduct of... Believing or something? Yeah, something like that. But they, it was really good. So we've been doing that. This is like... And we started getting like the fake meat again and doing that. And we're happy. So, uh, I mean, it could just be because that's what my body actually likes. I'm designed that way. Or yeah. it could be that because you read that hippie magazine in 1976 yeah and that ultimately de defined you as an 18 year old it would ultimately define who i am too i think if i had a different father i'd be in a different situation too i mean because even now i mean i'm still running i'm still very cautious of what i eat and all of these things um so i think that's i have to i feel like i attribute 100 percent of that to you and i think even the fact that i married who i married who's that way too I don't think that's a coincidence either. I think it's, I was hardwired to think this is how we live our lives. So there you go. All because of this one memory I had when I wanted a candy bar and you basically said, I've, I've never eaten a candy bar. Now granted you have. Yeah, I, I have. Yeah. But I still have never seen you eat one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just really don't like real sweet stuff. I mean, it's got a lot of sugar and I, I, don't, I don't care for it. So yeah, it's and that's why I'm. It's not something that, you know, I have to, oh, I really want that. It's got a lot of sugar in it. I don't like it in the first place. So yeah, I guess that helped me a lot. <laughs> yeah. And that's kind of how I am too. Well, I guess they're shutting the lights off on. So this is the end of the video. <laughs> you got something to say? You know where to say it right here in the comments.